I think that he's alive, and I'll believe otherwise when we know we've killed him. But uh, we're going after him, but we assume he's alive. But is there For obvious reasons, we're trying to track him pretty closely because he's declared war on us, so he's going to reap his reward for it. That is General James Mattis saying that the ISIS leader al Baghdadi is alive, and this comes as a U.S. Special Ops commander say they were close to nabbing that terror leader, but the lead went dead because of media reports. It was a very good lead. Unfortunately, it was leaked in a prominent national newspaper about a week later, and that, that lead went dead. So, um, you know, that's the, the challenge we have in, in terms of. Uh, you know, where and how our tactics and procedures are discussed openly. Uh, it's, it's, there's, a, there's a great need to inform the American public about what we're up to. There's also a great need to recognize things that will absolutely undercut our ability to do our job. Well, here to react, former special ops intel analyst and author of the book Drone Warrior, an elite soldier's inside account of the hunt for America's most dangerous enemies. That's Brett Velikovich. Brett, nice to see you again. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me this morning. So have these major media outlets, you know, CIA Director Mike Pompeo slamming the New York Times for outing the CIA officer you heard, Commander Thomas there talking to our own Catherine Harridge, have these major media outlets crossed the line in reporting this information? Yeah, absolutely. These, these prominent news outlets have definitely crossed the line at this point. I think a lot of times they don't realize that their words can, can kill. And uh, a lot of times some of these news outlets, you know, they don't understand the implications that these things have towards national security. And so in this particular case that General Thomas, the SOCOM commander, was speaking to was an article that um, was written in 2015 that referenced a raid that took place that revealed information um, about uh, our capabilities, capabilities that, quite frankly, we need to protect more and more these days with the threats that we face in America. So we've got to be careful with this. We've, we've got to... Uh, do something to, to really stop these leaks, especially coming from news outlets that have a complete disregard for our national security. Yeah, because you think about that, one of the main leaders of ISIS, right, they had a lot of information on this guy from help from his wife and then potentially from a, a news organization because of information that was leaked, he was then let go. What, what is the right balance for the media? Because you're someone on the other side of this and you know how important it is to keep some of these things secret to, to get these bad guys. What is your message to the media today in, in getting that balance right? Well, look, there's a fine line between reporting the news, informing the public, and then revealing uh, our capabilities that potentially degrades a warfighter. And so we have to, it's difficult because someone like me, I, I come from this, this secret you know, world, mm -hmm. and every single time I write something um, that, I, that I worked on before, I send it to the Department of Defense Security Review. And one of the things that's very interesting about this two, 2015 article, I saw a response to President Trump's tweet uh, from this prominent newspaper that basically said, you know, the Pentagon had no problem with this at all when we told them about this story. And I just, when I looked at it, I say, that, that cannot be true. If the Pentagon had seen the things that were written in this story, they would have had a field day. And I know this because when I submit stories, I just did this last week, when I submit a story to them, they redacted something that they didn't feel was comfortable getting out in the, the public space. And that's my obligation. I'll be doing that the rest of my life. But outlets like, uh, you know, the, the, these, these major newspapers, they don't have to do that. And that's a problem. They, they don't have to submit information to the Department of Defense Security Review. And so right. they need to realize that, again, words can kill, it can hurt the warfighter, and they need to have the responsibility to, to actually not put this stuff out in the public space. Yeah. yeah, the other big piece of this is the leaks, too. All right, Brett Velikovich, thanks so much for joining us Thank this you, morning. Brett. We appreciate it, Brett. Thank you again.